I think deep down, that's what everyone wants to see. This is John Tanaga of Fifth Pro Boxing Fans, joined by Richie Woodall. Uh, we have a new British champion in the in the bantamweight division. Ashley Lane stops Chris Bork. Uh, yeah, Richie, what did you make of it? I don't think a lot of people thought the stoppage was going to happen like that. Well, I think Chris Bork started the contest pretty well. I thought he was quite comfortable after a couple of rounds. He was bringing him onto shots. Ashley Lane, I could see uh, what he was trying to do. He was trying to get up close really early and really force the pressure. But he walked onto probably too many sh punches early on in the contest so the first two rounds definitely went to Borg but then I don't know something happened uh, with, with Ashley Lane he seemed to grow in confidence his corner were giving him the right instructions and he landed with a couple of decent right hands and then he followed it up and you know I think the, the fitness sort of ebbed away from uh, Chris Borg and uh, he got trapped on the ropes too many times made a few fundamental mistakes and you have to give it to Ashley Lane you know he persevered and he got the job done so what a performance that is because when you look at the life he's had and I listened to the interview afterwards and he's been homeless a couple of times and uh, he's had to really turn his life around which he has and that's an inspiring story and uh, fair play to him. Moses Atoma uh, does what Moses Atoma does. Uh, first round stoppage seemed a bit early. I don't know what you think. Did you think the stoppage was, was a bit early? No, not at all. I thought it was a good call from the referee. The referee actually, I thought, saved Garber from getting knocked clean out. So, you know, we don't really want to see that. Um, dominant performance very clever very talented boxer can fight going forward can box coming on the back foot when they're actually coming to him he actually caught him with a couple of good shots short little right hook was went in there and the left hand he brought him onto the left hand time and again so yeah he's a quality kid he really really is so i didn't think it was a it was a premature stoppage i thought he say the referee uh, got got it right spot on are we getting too ahead of ourselves to say that he'd be ready for you know the top british guys at, at this at this stage Maybe so, but listen, he's a quality kid. I think, you know, he's with, he's with a, the, the, the right promoter in Frank Warren, and Frank knows how to bring boxers through. And he, he just, you see, the key to it is just giving him a little something a little bit extra to do each time, a little bit harder. And you've got to remember, he's only, what, 19 years of age, so he's still a baby. Um, but I think Frank will get it right. He knows what he's doing. But, yeah, when you've got someone like that, a potential world champion... Um, What's the rush? I know he wants to be the youngest ever heavyweight champion, but I think one day he will become a world champion. But what's the rush? Mm. He's just got to keep learning, and Frank Warren just got to keep providing the right challenges for him, and I think he'll do that. Quick, uh, a few more because I know you've had a long night, Richard, here at York Hall. Uh, Anthony Joshua, someone you've you've worked with, uh, you know, in the amateur system and things like that. Uh, what did you make? What what have you made of the the resurgence over the last four fights, and what's been the key to that? Well, I think he's got he's had a new trainer, hasn't he? Um, which I didn't agree with at the start because I think Robert McCracken has, has been brilliant for Anthony Joshua but Anthony Joshua wanted uh, a, a new coach wanted to go a different way and he, he's gelled he's doing well with him and um, I think the, the, the knockout against Ngannou was very impressive indeed now everyone's talking of if, if Tyson Fury can come back and beat Alexander Usyk then you know that's still the fight that everyone wants to see and, but AJ's really back in the picture and uh, he's a quality kid Is uh, Fury AJ a uh, a closer fight a different fight than it was maybe a year ago it's a closer fight if AJ can get through Usyk which I think he will I think he'll be too big for Usyk it's a hard fight and it's a close one to call but I think he's got the edge I think he beats Usyk then the next fight would obviously be on everyone's mind for AJ uh, Tyson Fury versus AJ I think deep down that's what everyone wants to see yeah, and uh, would would Styles make fights in, in that particular fight or is it completely different to any Fury fight we've seen it's a tough tough one to call isn't it because you've got a, someone like um, Anthony Joshua who, who's very very explosive and powerful but Tyson Fury seems to nullify most big punches and um, he's difficult to get to so it's a hard one to predict and last one Richie uh, one thing I've always wanted to ask you is uh, back in the, the Olympics you faced uh, a certain Roy Jones Jr uh, Back then, did you know, did you think he would turn out to be considered 
one of the greatest we've ever seen? Well, I knew he was special because, um, you know, I was pretty decent, but I couldn't really get too close to him. He was picking me off with some fantastic um, left hands, jabs, and if I made a mistake, he punished me. So it was only over three rounds, obviously, but, um, yeah, he's a quality kid. Um, it hasn't surprised me of, uh, where he's gone, to be quite honest, because and what he's achieved, because he's got, he had that natural ability of not getting hit, even early back then. So, yeah, he was very good indeed. Bunce is calling my name, so I've got to go. Richie, appreciate it. Nice Thank one. You.